sign of Kaushik Zawar, AKJ Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. A great set of numbers on the team. Sir, I have a question on the stainless steel business. So, please correct me if my understanding is wrong. So, uh, we are having, we will be outlaying the capacity of 25,000 tons there. And the place has been decided as Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, I wanted to understand this plant will be operational in FI26 because uh, aren't we a late entrant here because already uh, the similar capacities have been running in the uh, in other companies also. We follow those sector companies. So how much time it will take the order book because it takes time right, uh, to scale up that stainless steel business. But you are saying on the operational first year, you would expect somewhere around, if you do the math, some 500 to 1,000 crores of revenue from the first year. So is that the expectation and how does this cycle work? Can you explain on the order book, etc., on the stainless steel part? Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Davar. So from the stainless steel, uh, the operational is Q4 24-25, and uh, this is for commercial production. And uh, as per the business plan which we have taken in context right now, the first year we have taken a top line of between 400 to 500 crores. This is mainly the mother pipe, and part of it will be the Pilgut product which will go into the market. And, as, and as per the other uh, uh, the players, uh, obviously Ratnamani is already there, and there is Sendvik and few more players. And uh, as per the, uh, the business plan and the market scenario, there is quite a big demand on the product currently. And due to the BIS and the restriction put in uh, to import the mother pipe from China, uh, the current demand is uh, quite high. And the local people, such as the other vendors, are not giving the mother pipe. They are actually filgering it and giving it for the projects. So there is a good demand currently, and that's what we envisage when we are putting this project. Okay, so we will be catering to the domestic market here? Yes, we would be initially catering to the domestic market and also the export market. Okay, so it will be in the oil and gas sector only? Yes. Okay, so it will be a mother pipes, whatever the, this is our product. The percentage of ratio will uh, vary. The first year uh, we will do probably 60 to 70% of mother pipes and only 30% silver. And as the accreditations and everything, as you start exporting and get approvals uh, worldwide, we would uh, change the balance accordingly. And also we are capable to do higher inconels of duplex, super duplex titanium from this mill. So, uh, you know, once the stabilization happens initially, then we will also convert it to a higher margin uh, product as well. Okay. The other part, what you said, 30%, I did not understand that part. Uh, mother and the other one, what was that? Can you explain that? So they are basically the they are high value products in the sense uh, they are smaller diameter. So a press can remove a certain size of a mother pipe and then you filter it down for different usages, such as uh, you have for aviation and then you have for nuclear. So there is a certain size which the press cannot make, which is get filtered and then goes, which is a higher margin business also. Okay, okay. What would be the margin for the uh, shallow what mother pipe? So the total margin for uh, the SS uh, seamless tubes is between 18 to 22 percent. So any any time anything between 10 uh, to 11 percent for uh, the mother pipe and 10 to 11 percent for the filtering bit. Okay. And this, what is the series we are focusing on? Series three, four, what? So we have uh, three ones series in the sense the the product uh, quality you mean or which yeah. one? Great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, so 316 is the principal, 316 and 316 L. And then so on for the uh, 304, which is one grade lower. And then you have the higher inconels, the super duplex and super duplex uh, alloys. So those will be CBS. Sorry four. to interrupt. Koshik, can you join the queue? There are many in the line. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Gandhi from Discovery Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. You know, it's a question. You know, given we are already almost debt-free and we've already issued, you know, actually, I mean, warrants to the promoter and uh, the healthy EBITDA that we have guided to for both FY25 and FY26, 
just wanted to understand the, the rationale for raising incremental uh, uh, 250 crores. Hi, Dinesh, how are you? So, Dinesh, the, the reason uh, for the incremental is uh, that currently we are doing a CAPEX, which is uh, outlay of the CAPEX is 550 crores for the SS. And then also we have certain uh, CAPEX in the pipeline. We are just waiting for certain permissions uh, for our uh, expansion of ELSO, ESO in a different country. So we are already looking at that. And on the basis of that, our uh, CAPEX level will be between seven to, uh, the debt levels will go up approximately to around six to 700 crores. And to balance between the debt and cash in the company, we are just keeping some incremental uh, value in the company. Got it. Understood, sir. Sir, did the other question was with regards to the approval you have on the hydrogen side, which you've spoken about. You know, can you explain as to how difficult this approval actually is to get? Who are the other people who are looking for it? And and you know, how does it place us in terms of this space? And uh, and and uh, um, and you know, when do we expect actually revenue to come from here? So, like I said, hydrogen is a, is a new sector. It took us 16 months to get the approval from the European uh, Research Lab. Uh, lab. It, was quite a, it was quite a detailed uh, survey on the pipes and the fracture process that under a certain pressure, there should not be any leakage and fracture during the, you know, once the pipeline is laid and the hydrogen, because hydrogen is quite a notorious gas. Um, it was a three-step process which the lab had done, and the final process approval certification we got just a few months ago. And uh, looking at the outlook, India is looking for hydrogen and clean energy to go, I think, 2050 is the vision for India. But Europe's uh, vision is 2030, 2035. So there are a lot of orders in which now we are already bidding in which they're hydrogen enabled. So basically the designing is done in such a way that the steel and the quality which is used is for the hydrogen. But currently they're not using hydrogen glass, but they're enabling the pipeline so that you can be used in the future. Also future, the hydrogen thing is very important that every single line pipe of hydrogen has to be laid down new because the old lines do not work for the hydrogen. So it is a brand new sector for us. So I cannot tell you exactly how much business will come, but it's a brand new sector like how a gas sector is there today. It's a brand new sector. And uh, tentatively, what we what in uh, in the vibrant Gujarat also, which was announced, approximate quantity in the next 10 to 15 years is probably more than 5 million tons. Out of which, I think certain bit is committed by the Adani, and certain bit for the new SR is putting a new hydrogen uh, this uh, in uh, Gujarat. So uh, the sector looks very positive going forward, and I think the orders will come from the next three years onwards. Got it. That's extremely helpful. That's all for me. I'll rejoin with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumpman from Tiger Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, this, uh, the first question is like I joined the uh, queue mid late. So, for FI26, what is the revenue and margin guidance you hear, sir? Mm -hmm. So FI26, uh, we are looking at a top line of for approximately 5,000 crores, and the EBITDA level at between 10 to 11 percent, which would be around 500 to 550 crores. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Uh, so my se second question is on like, uh, like in last phone call you said like we we were expecting payment in one month for Marino Shelter, and uh, like today you said like still in process and we are like expecting by FI24. Uh, I mean, why was there a delay? No, so the basic thing is uh, we will uh, we are we are going to get the payment uh, in this couple of months. The, that's why I said by the end of this, before the end of this year, we will get the certain amount of payment. The delay was because there was a legal due diligence which was going on, which has got completed now. So the final documentation is in process, and once that is done, only we can you know give the entire declare the entire thing and give the details out. So it has to be more. What is the quantum of uh, payment we're expecting? So we should get around 40 to 50 crores uh, this year. And uh, 
then uh, once the transaction is completed and uh, the entire details are out, then I can disclose further details of it. But a large chunk of revenue will come to the company for the next four to five years. Right. Also, so on the margin trend, like in this further, like uh, there's a like uh, with confusion between operating and other operating income. Uh, like if we explore that, it will come around seven point five percent. Right. Like, can you uh, tell us the nature of other operating income that you mentioned in the? So actually, it is uh, income through operational source only. The the the, the foreign exchange uh, benefits which we get through this business, and sometimes the cash flow when we have extra cash flow and it is going in FD and everything. These are the only uh, revenue which is generated from other expenses. So and the, sometimes even the export incentive which is there when we buy locally and export, so we get that also. So that is what goes in the other expense. So that is why we always nowadays add it and put it together that it is uh, other income from uh, operations. Uh, so my thank you. So final question is on like uh, in this case in capex uh, that we are doing. So you said like we are developing two products. One is mother five, and can you name the other uh, product? You make it's it's basically mother pipe, and through the mother pipe, you make you you draw it down or pilgur it down, and make a pilgur product, which is uh, goes in like I said, nuclear, pharmaceuticals, and different sizes. Because the mother pipe, your main machine of the extrusion press, does not manufacture to that size. So one is a hot drawn process, extruded process, and one is a cold drawn process after the uh, you know hot drawn process is completed. So that is why th this is uh, the two-layer process. And uh, with these products, we are planning to venture into aviation and nuclear sector? Yeah, yeah. this product is used from uh, aviation, nuclear, pharmaceuticals, fertilizers, heat treatment, everywhere. Dairy. Dairy. And, so any particular discussion with the elaboration plans in this regard? Sorry, I can't, I didn't get that. Uh, any particular uh, discussion with the potential client for this product. It, it, in in progress, we will be participating in one of the tubes fair. So we keep meeting. So we are discussing con continuously. But then I think the it will only materialize once the plant is operational and uh, in execution that time. Sure, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vatsal Kothari from Ulf Accurate Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, hi. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. The first question is that I would just like to get some clarification on the EBITDA guidance for FI25 and FI26. Is the, are the EBITDA numbers you mentioned including other income or excluding other income? So hi, uh, Vatsal. So the EBITDA would be around uh, between 9 to 11 percent uh, for 24-25 and uh, 10 to 12 percent for 25-26. The EBITDA is including other income because the income is generated from this particular company itself. It is not generated from another source or outside source. Understood. Um, so I uh, just wanted to understand that excluding other income, what would the EBITDA margins look like for 25 and 26? Uh, I think more or less if we see as an average 2%, percent one and a half two percent difference. Understood. One, almost one, I think one, one and a half percent as an average when we put it, it's almost uh, that much. Only. Understood. Understood. And, uh, you know, my second question is, how would the order book break up for the current quarter look like between the oil and gas segment and the water segment? And, you know, expanding on that, uh, what would the EBITDA per ton look like for both these segments respectively? So the order book currently stands at 1300 crores and uh, it's currently 50-50%. It's oil and gas and water also 50%. And going forward, we are uh, L1 and a uh, few bids which are for oil and gas. Uh, the EBITDA margins normally for oil and gas comes around, uh, you know, between 11 to 13% and for water comes between 7 to 8%. So as at a blended rate, it would land up between 9 to 11% uh, year on year. And uh, we are working on some operational activities to increase the EBITDA at least by 1%. Understood. And what would this breakup uh, look like for one year before in Q3, FI3? Uh, Q3, 
Yeah, one year before it was, I think, the 70-30. I think more 70% was uh, oil gas and 30% was water. And for Q4, uh, would it be reasonable to expect the same numbers, 50-50 breakup? Uh, yes, it would be. Understood. Perfect. Uh, so thank you so much. Pascal, adding to his point, uh, see, in our other income, we do consider, uh, you know, foreign exchange gains. Uh, since we are generating these uh, foreign exchange gains out of our uh, core business, we are considering it as our uh, other income, other operating income indeed. But it is classified under other income uh, according to ICI guidelines. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Agarwal from ValueQuest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, Nikhil, first question was on your uh, plan. So, I mean, if you could just share some more details on that. Uh, we can't hear you, Anirudh. Uh, is it better now? Yeah, slightly better. Yeah, I was just saying if you could share some more details about the Saudi plant plans. I think you had mentioned in one of your interviews and, you know, you alluded to a new plant on other geography. So if you can just expand a little bit on that. Anirudh, for the Saudi, uh, we are just still waiting some in-principle approval. So we cannot uh, really discuss any of the numbers and we cannot declare it till the time it is signed off and cleared. Once that is done, we can give you all the details and everything. We have the workings and everything, but I cannot, uh, obviously, for uh, reasons, I cannot uh, disclose it right now. Either. Understood. But uh, safe to say it would be like buyout of an existing plant or something, I imagine, because you would want to hit the ground running, right? And not a new infield that will take three, four more years. Is that broadly correct? Went on this side. Now, it would, be, it would not be correct of me to do that. Understood. Uh, second, on real estate, you could just mention, you know, I think you mentioned something on revenue share going ahead. So, uh, that is basically some sort of JV that we we'll enter. Uh, within, you know, the we can't hear you. Your voice is not coming properly. Hello, is it better? Yes, yeah, thanks. Uh, sorry. So I was just saying on the real estate deal, uh, the correct understanding is that basically this is a JV that you would be looking to enter, right? As and when the deal finalizes, and that is why you would see some revenue share over the next five years. Uh, yeah. So it's a JDA. It's a joint development agreement with uh, uh, A plus grade developer from Mumbai. And uh, they will develop the entire uh, project, and they will give us uh, obviously upfront revenue, and as well as uh, uh, revenue throughout the next four to five years of the project. Got it. No incremental financial investment from our side required, right? This is only the land that you know basically we. We'll no, nothing. Only we are supposed to receive only now. We are not putting any more. <laughs> okay, great. Got it. Uh, Third thing was on new orders. So basically, I think historically, you know, like you also mentioned, 70 to 80 percent used to be oil and gas, you know, and water we used to typically avoid or, you know, take lower uh, contracts off. Is there something on oil and gas that is, you know, leading to pressure in terms of new orders for us? Uh, you can just throw some light on that. No, I, I didn't understand your question. The so typically, I was saying oil and gas, we used to focus on largely oil and gas orders, right? So over the last few months, basically, we've seen that new order wins have been slightly slower than, you know, the hundred we would have expected and what we are seeing for some of your peers. And even within that, it seems that there are larger water segment orders. So anything on oil and gas that, you know, is not worked for us or any challenges? Yeah, so the, basically the water is uh, contributing to a good portion now is because of the drive in India for the water. Uh, the oil and gas, uh, like I said, it is uh, it is ongoing. Couple of years, there's some sort of slowdown, then something else picks up. So we are looking at a big uh, upscale in the oil and gas in the coming years. Plus also ONGC, deep sea exploration they have done now. So that is also demand, a lot of demand is coming from there. And as well as the ERW, there is a CAPEX plan by the government for 18,000 crores for city gas, furthermore. 
so looking at the future demand the last year though we were we were also more focused on exports because there were good size export orders going forward we are seeing good amount of demand in uh, oil and gas also india and abroad and water will continue to obviously drive up the revenues also or, or water is equally important for us got it and oil and gas export orders i mean the right way to understand is you would need some local manufacturing presence to you know garner larger orders right and Oh, and the plant itself is is not sufficient to do that no not really it's uh, depends some countries have a restriction of a percentage or something but rest of the countries where it's an open tender there is no restriction so we make it from india only and we are more than sufficient to make from here understood understood okay got it uh, thanks a lot that's it from me thank you The next question is from the line of Khadija Mantri from Capri Oval. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my question is regarding the numbers. So, was there any one-off in the other expenses? Because we can uh, see it as we can. We can't hear you. Your voice is Hi. coming very low. Can you speak up, please? Hello. Yeah. Is it better now? Yeah, it's much better. Yeah, sir. So my question is regarding increase in other expenses. Was there any one-off in other expenses? Because as we can see, there is a sharp increase. So majorly, the the uh, freight charges have gone up because uh, we had an export order. So the major cost on the other expenses is the freight. So can you quantify that? In the corresponding quarter of December 22, that was overseas trade was uh, around 25 crore. This year, and for the current quarter, it is 70 crore. 70. And so, my uh, another question is uh, regarding gross profit margin. Uh, so, uh, do you have any guidance for gross profit? Because we can see uh, it has increased by 300 basis points in this quarter. So, what would be uh, it, what, your guidance on a sustainable basis? Hello, hello. So, so basically, the like we said, the beta margins. Is can you hear us? Hello. Yes, yes, sure, sure, yeah. Is okay, so the EBITDA margin levels will be around nine uh, to eleven percent, like we guided. Okay, sir. No, my question was regarding gross profit margin. Profit margins are also similar level only, which has been uh, in the company for the last three years. Okay, sir. And sir. Uh, Bit of a long-term question. Uh, do we see any opportunity in the uh, coal gasification uh, project that the government is uh, taking up? Okay, uh, for any uh, gas uh, or transportation line, the cheapest form is obviously to put it by a line pipe. So, as we are already approved in all the author government authorities, definitely we will be looking at it if anything comes up. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. So, oh, hi, uh, Kamal. They said our gross margin is always around 18 to 24 percent. Since our OPEX is getting increasing uh, because of our uh, ERW ERW expenses and uh, other expansion plans, that's why you are looking at the EBITDA margin at uh, 9 to 11 percent, which is sustainable. Gross margin, uh, if you will tell. Our gross margin is standing around 18 to 24 percent every quarter. Okay, sir. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ruchika Dhanuka from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to know if you could help us with the volume numbers for the quarter. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, Ruchika. So uh, it's approximately eighty-five to ninety thousand tons. Okay, and uh, similar number for the 
Same quarter last year, if you could. Hmm? It's uh, same quarter last year would be slightly similar. I think uh, around sixty-five thousand tons last year, but the steel price was higher, so it, you know you cannot match it directly proportionate to top line. Uh, sir, sir. Okay, and uh, so what what is the capex number for FY twenty-four and twenty-five? The capex number for twenty-five is around uh, hundred and fifty crores, and four was around ninety crores. Ninety crores. So, what would be the unspent amount uh, currently for this year? Around twenty-five crores, which we are spending now in the next two months. Twenty-five thirty crores. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. That's it from my end. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Chaudhary, from Investor. Please go ahead. Sir, wanted to probably understand uh, the uh, our visibility with respect to the hydrogen pipes. Uh, you did mention there is an opportunity in Europe, but are there any active uh, probably orders that we uh, expect in probably coming uh, quarters, or is it a still far-fetched uh, like thing that uh, that might come in probably next two to three years only? So we we have bid certain uh, orders in Europe. But uh, it's in the pipeline. It's uh, basically an hydrogen-enabled line. So I don't know whether they will run it, but it is designed as for hydrogen. So it will be uh, very good for us also if we could, you know, win that order. And other than that, India is we are looking at it, but it would take two to three years. I think everyone's working on it. And uh, like I said, once it comes up full fledgedly and a couple of lines are laid down and everyone gets the confidence, then it's a all new lines of a brand new sector like how we have water or gas and oil hydrogen will be a brand new sector which would drive a lot of the natural energy up so okay. nikhil adding to his point adding to this point uh, uh, the hydrogen pipeline market is projected to grow from 9.1 billion uh, us dollar in 2023 to usd 26 billion by 2030 so the cagr would be around 16% year on Till 2030, and you have to look it from a global angle, not from India angle. So we are open for every market. So demand is high, as he rightly said. All the lines would be virgin. So there is a huge demand in this sector, and being a front mover, we will take that advantage. Okay. Also, probably any margins that probably we might be uh, envisaging in probably this new uh, thing that we are doing. Margin would also be uh, also be higher than our uh, uh, regular saw pipes, but uh, we have not uh, done any you know uh, such products, so it will be very difficult to quantify that. But we we do expect the margin would be somewhere around 18 to 20 percent at least. Got it, got it. Also uh, wanted to understand with respect to our uh, this seamless uh, expansion that we are doing. What would be the risk to our uh, commencing of operations by, uh, let's say, Q4 of 25? Anything that probably you feel uh, will delay the capex, any land acquisition which is pending uh, on our cards, something that you that worries you, or at, that should worry us as also an investor. No, not really. We have already placed all the long lead items. Uh, already has been placed, and all the LCs. And the finance has been opened up already, so we do not see. Definitely, the only challenge will be to get it executed uh, properly and on time, which uh, which we anyways have the team and speciality to do the needful. So, other than probably you know few months plus and minus, I do not see in this uh, age any other issue than that. Got it. Interesting, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Sir, please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, coming uh, on the capex part of uh, your business, uh, so uh, we are expected to do five fifty crores for the stainless steel pipe, right? And uh, uh, as, as I can see, the CWIP stands at fifty crores now. 
So just to get your understanding, we'll be spending the 500 crores in uh, FI remaining part of the FI 24 and 25, right? Yes. No, because, because since you guided for 150 crores of KPIs and 25, so uh, I mean I couldn't add up the amount. No, no. So the debt uh, 515 isn't. I'm talking about the internal capital utilization. The rest is from the bank debt, which is taken. So okay. If, yeah. So more okay. than yeah, yeah. Uh, 170 to 200 crores has already been including LCs opening and everything. Approximate expense on the SS, which has been done till date, is 124 plus MT, around 190 to 200 crores. So for this year uh, till uh, December, the further capex would be approximately 300 to 350 crores to complete and start the project. Okay. And uh, since uh, so you are anyways raising around 250 crores. Uh, okay, for in equity. Uh, still, you are guiding for a debt of 700 crores. Uh, so I am thinking, uh, what is that additional amount coming uh, for? I mean, uh, so, since, yeah. so we have planned certain expansion uh, abroad, in which uh, we are uh, just waiting for the final approval. Once that is done, we would be moving there as well. And uh, for that reason only, we are uh, raising the funds. And we don't want to stress out the current cash and existing business running. So that's the reason for raising the fund. Uh, and what rate are we raising this debt? I mean, what is the expected uh, cost of fund? So we, we are not raising it through uh, this particular... We are talking about 250 crores is through a preferential allotment. Up to. Up to. No, no, I mean, I'm talking about the debt uh, that we'll be raising uh, over and above this to fund the plant. Half percent. Nine to nine and a half percent. And when it's US dollar, it's around seven and a half percent. Okay, okay. Uh, so coming to the part of other income, so we have, uh, if we go through a lot of uh, companies that are posting their quarterly or half yearly financial statements, right? Uh, they do uh, insert a column called uh, other operating income in the financial statement itself. And uh, I mean, approved by uh, the NDAF as well as uh, companies act, right? I mean, that gives you a better picture of what EBITDA is uh, because orange, we have to wait till uh, the, final, uh, the investor presentation is out to understand uh, what is the actual EBITDA uh, margins, right? Uh, so, uh, I would request you if uh, that uh, new line can be added where it's, it is shown as other operating income and we have an other income column separately for it. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Yeah. Thank you for your suggestion. We'll do that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, I'll get back. Thank you, Vignesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhananjay Mishra from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, so in your guidance of 3600 crore uh, for FY25, so uh, how much contribution you have considered from ERW? And uh, for FY26, uh, because we are saying that uh, stainless, stainless tube will be contributing close to 500 crore in the, in the first year. So uh, are we considering some other uh, incremental revenue coming from unplanned capex in FY26 revenue? Because, uh, uh, can you just clarify on that? Yes, sir. So, from uh, this year, we are contributing to ERW is around three to 400 crores for the 24-25. And 25-26, uh, we are looking at around 500 crores from 4 to 500 crores from 7 to 800 crores from uh, the existing ERW, which will be fully in track. And plus certain capex, like we said, we are going to uh, one of the Middle East countries and we are just really, we will be getting certain revenue, but a small revenue. That's why we have uh, kept it at around uh, 5,000 crores of a top line, which is on the conservative approachable side, up into 11% for 26. Because ERW, uh, this 115,000 capacity, uh, as last time I think you said that uh, peak uh, uh, revenue could be around 400 crore. Now we are saying that it could be further increased to 700 crore? No, no. ERW peak revenue can go up to almost 1,000 crores. Okay. And uh, we are considering for this year, as this is the because we just got all the accreditations now, 
So the first year we are considering around 40% uh, of uh, 40 to 50 percent of the top line from uh, their capability top line to 30 to 40 percent. And uh, in list deal for the first year, we've considered between 30 to 40 percent again. So is this 1,000 crore? We've really ramped up. So 1,000 crore uh, top line you are considering at uh, uh, what volume? Uh, 1 lakh uh, uh, this volume? 1 lakh 10 or? One lakh fifty thousand. Volume is driven on the market. If steel price is 70 rupees, then the margin is driven on the basis of that. So that I cannot comment one year down the line what will be the current price. The volume, what we are saying is that if uh, 100,000 to 125,000 is the capacity, uh, we are looking at anything between 30 to 40 percent uh, usage of that capacity. Which will culminate to around three to four hundred crores for 25, uh, 24, 25, and almost seven hundred crores for 25, 26 from ERW itself. And SS 26, the first year would be around between three to four hundred crores. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manan Shah from Manibi Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I wanted to understand on the hydrogen pipe uh, segment uh, that we plan to enter. So, uh, how are these pipes different uh, from the pipes which are getting used for the existing natural gas pipeline? I mean, why can't those pipes be used uh, for transporting natural gas? Uh, sorry, hydrogen? So, uh, basically, the grade of steel is completely different. These grade of steels are used for uh, sour gas. So, the, the the formation, the process, what we do is the same, but the grade of steel and the welding is different. So these these basically these are used for highly sour uh, grades of uh, crude and gas. Uh, these kind of grades of uh, sour grade steel has been used, and these are the same grade uh, which we tested through our pipes uh, for hydrogen, which got qualified. So that's why they have to lay down the whole new lines, each and every new line required for hydrogen. Okay, understood. Uh, so what would be the competitive landscape uh, uh, for these kind of pipes currently? Uh, for the hydrogen pipes? Yes. Uh, basically, if once the approval is there uh, with the authorities, it's the first move's advantage and how you uh, get your approvals in place which is a very big uh, process in our industry. Uh, once you are through with that, then I think it will be a good, but India will be still competitive to the world. That's, we've seen that. And qualification is very, very important. To ask when you're bidding, generally, uh, how many players are there who are uh, bidding for this versus, say, when you're bidding for an oil and gas order? So, to, I mean, there are just two players or three players who are bidding for the same order or... There are more players. Lesser because yeah. this is only used in ELSA, not in spiral. So firstly, all the mills who are only making uh, ELSA uh, pipes will be qualified for hydrogen number one. So okay. a large quantity of 70% of the quantity of the world of uh, spiral quantities go out. So you have reduced the number to quite a small amount. And out of that also who are qualified and capable and have the credibility and have a past experience of sour grade will get the further experience and also having a steel tie-up and good uh, relationship with steel mills because this kind of steel currently which is approved for hydrogen is only five six mills in the world okay and for us this will be the raw material the, the grade of steel required will be domestically sourced or we have to import it no it's all imported domestically it's not available. okay understood oh and are there any uh current live uh, tenders uh, for this project so for hydrogen pipes yeah we've bid for a couple of them in europe and what would be the size of these tenders? <laughs> Decently large size. Okay. Understood. Sure, thanks. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumpman from Tiger Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, so, uh, in this quarter, you said there's a spike cost increase from 25 CR to 70 CR, right? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, there's an increase in freight cost in this quarter. 
rate costs have gone up to 70 crores uh, vis-a-vis 25 crores last quarter or last year? Corresponding quarter of last year, December 22, I was talking about. Okay, and sir, having uh, across industries, trade costs come down compared to last year. I, I mean, uh, I think you are an exception where the trade costs. So, can you just uh, give a little more detail about this? It has not gone up. Trade cost is down only, but it is the size of the project which got shipped out because last year, like we said, this year, almost 70 to 80 percent was uh, export order. Large couple of large export orders which we did. It's on the basis of that. So, so the domestic or the logistic. Cost down and the shipping cost went down. So this is not a one-off cost, it's a regular cost which will be incurred going forward also for export orders. Regular cost. If nothing, we might have saved some freight <laughs> from the regular cost. No, come again, sorry. If not, we would have saved the freight when the freights were down rather than spend more cost on the freight. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, I'm not clear, sir. Sorry, I'm sorry. So you're saying that in, in yeah. any case of export, it cost, we did not spend more on the freight cost. We were in line with the freight cost of the market or we were actually lesser because the market was down at that time. So we negotiated well. So we would be probably lesser, not more. Okay, so this is more to do because the export volumes are up. That's why the freight cost is seeming to be uh, more. Okay, understood. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The last question is from the line of Vinay Rokadia, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, uh, just I wanted to know what are the basic raw material and what was the price movement in this quarter regarding it was was it stable or something that sort. So basic raw material is still it is uh, HR uh, plates and HR coils. It is special basically uh, for. Uh, API grade we procure it from domestic market as well as we can get it imported from uh, country like China, Korea, Japan, Germany. Market. And what was the pricing trend in the raw material? But was it stable or something? It is more or less stable. Okay. And just last one question, sir. Regarding this Marino shelter, can you just brief something about the size of the project or what will be the our share or something and the area in which this project is coming up or something like that? Vinay Ji, if I tell you now, it will not be fine. I cannot disclose it till the time it is signed off. But uh, it's a large size of project, that's what I can say. It's approximately between 20 to 25 lakhs per foot of area which will be developed. And we will get a good chunk of uh, share for our uh, revenue. And these revenues, uh, like I said, would continue to come in for the next uh, four to five years. And the company, whatever company is invested, hopefully company will get three times of that amount. Thanks a lot, sir. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you. Thank you all for participating in the earnings phone call. I hope we were able to answer your questions satisfactorily and at the same time offering insight into our business. If you have any further questions or would like to know more about the company, please reach out to our Investor Relations Manager at Valorum Advisors. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy. On behalf of Choice Equity Broking, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now discuss.